The world is producing more data than ever before. Every time you go to a checkout, use your mobile phone or log into Facebook, that detail is recorded and stored. So much new data is being produced that 90% of all data that has ever existed was made in the last two years. The good news for business is that analysing vast reams of information has never been easier. It's called big data and it's changing the way people do business. Retailers have been at the forefront of the data revolution. With millions of customers and 150,000 employees, keeping track of everything at Sainsbury's used to be a near impossible task. Now, however, it's almost simple. Well, it's changed our business in a, in a lot of ways, and I'll give you maybe a few examples. So, for instance, promotions. Uh, if, for example, customers buy pet food, we can identify that from the data and we can target those customers with other pet-related products and services, like, uh, for instance, pet insurance. So that's one example. Um, one of my favourite examples is store ranging. We have a number of stores which are uh, near where students are. And uh, if you look at the data, not surprisingly, students actually clean themselves less frequently. However, they do buy Febreze to make themselves smell nice. So we use that to make sure that we get the right ranges in our shops. The market really is polarising into companies that have data and then companies that don't have data. You can see that in a company that has data, the opportunity to, to do a better and better job uh, for customers on a much more personalised basis uh, is there. And clearly for companies that don't have the data, that's, that's not an opportunity. It's not just big businesses that are benefiting from the data revolution. Small startups are riding the wave too. One such company is Made.com, an online furniture retailer based in West London. The group crowdsources designs with people voting on their favourites, and some of the winners are put into production. On our website we have a vote section where we put up new collections that have already been designed either in-house or by one of our designers and we test that collection out, not, in, not always, but in, in some cases, to understand the market demand. Um, it helps us inform what we should launch on the site, but also what perhaps we shouldn't. So we did actually have an incident where our product team absolutely loved a collection. They put it up there and it just didn't do well at all, and therefore we never launched it. Um, we, we, we also had that vote section very much based on price as well as on the actual design of the product. So we try and measure those two results. In the showroom itself, we get a lot more qualitative data back, um, which actually is still an incredibly useful tool for us. So we've recently been working with Tamra, who's been collecting data since October on our site and um, understanding how users use the site and, and navigate their way around it. Um, since December, we then put um, a model live where customers are now delivered a personalized and optimized page um, for them. So if they're coming in from a keyword search on Google and they land on a gray sofa page, that page has been optimized to that specific user. So I guess where data used to help us segment um, customers into buckets, what big data has allowed us to do, I guess, is actually optimize that experience to an individual's kind of needs. So the advantages of that are that we deliver a better experience and deliver continuity from the advert that the consumer has clicked on. So if somebody is looking for a specific colour of sofa and they click on a red sofa advert, what we do is tailor the landing page or tailor the category page to ensure that the, you know, the products that we think are most relevant for that consumer are um, at the top of the page. Then, as we understand and look at the engagement of that consumer on made.com, we use those models then to personalize that experience even further to make sure the products that they're shown are relevant for them. But how do companies sort through the vast amounts of data that are now being produced? While some is useful, a lot are just white noise. To combat this, an array of startups have set up shop in recent years to help large organizations sort the wheat from the chaff. Qubit, a big data startup based in Soho in London, helps companies ranging from Staples, the office supplier, to French Connection, the fashion retailer, get value from their data. Consumers are becoming more and more uh, in control of their data and who they're going to share information with. And so businesses will be able to provide a better experience if they have an exchange with you as a consumer. So you'll be able to say, this is who I am and this is what I want. Um, give me a discount because I've told you that and the business will be able to provide you with a better experience that they'll make more sales from. Data is changing businesses, both large and small. Companies now know more about who their customers are and what they want than they ever did before. Whoever can leverage this most effectively will come out on top. Duncan Robinson, Financial Times.